All right, Michael Moore is back with us. We got to talk about 2020. Michael, uh, there are a, a lot of people running for president on the Democratic side. A lot of people who are asking themselves the question uh, about whether they can do a better job than Donald Trump, and most of them are coming up with an answer that says, yes, that, that group of eight is going to become much bigger probably over the course mm. of the next couple of months. Yeah. Uh, are they asking themselves the right question? <laughs> uh, well, no, because can I do better than Donald Trump? Uh, camera two, <laughs> yeah. I'd vote for him, you know? I mean, seriously, uh, anyone in this room, anybody out there, anybody watching right now, obviously could probably do a better job than Donald Trump. No, the question they need to be asking is, who's going to crush Donald Trump? Who can win? I mean, really win. Not just win the popular mm -hmm. vote, win Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Who could crush Trump? Who, and who is that person? Ask yourself that right now. If you're at home, you know, ask mm -hmm. yourselves right now, who's that person that right now, tonight, could crush Donald Trump. And do you think that's more important than taking positions on things? We knew that health care was one of the biggest uh, issues to most American voters in the last election, certainly to Democratic voters. Yeah. And, and everybody's taking out a position on health care. Many of them are, are coming out uh, on the side of uh, single payer health care. You think the who can crush Donald Trump will be the most important question above I think it already is. Okay. I think they asked that question in an Iowa poll of Democrats last week, and that was the number one thing people came back with. Yes, of course, health care, tax the rich, uh, uh, raise the minimum wage, mm -hmm. end mass incarceration, all these things that are essentially being pushed by the new progressive Democrats mm -hmm. in the House. I mean, that's what I, I mean. I wish it's, it's too bad that you have to be 35 to be president. You know, that we put that in the Constitution, the founding fathers, because people died at 38 or 40 mm -hmm. back then. You know, we need to lower that. If that was lowered to 30. You, all right, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is that where you're going with this? Could be running, could be running. She just has to be 30 by the time, mm -hmm. by the time of January of 2021. Uh, so so she's, look, everybody can out progressive each other on their platforms. You're saying that she's got she fire in the belly to, the, to get to She is the going. leader. She is the leader. Everybody knows it. Everybody feels it. She's the leader of this, of this mass movement that is not, I'm not talking about a movement in terms of an organization. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a Fox, Fox News poll this week mm -hmm. that where it said 70% of the American public agree with her mm -hmm. on having the top marginal rate for the rich, their taxes, 70% mm -hmm. rate. On the rich. And that's a Fox News poll right. saying that over two thirds of the country. Now, now there are a lot of Americans who think that's her. crazy, but they also don't remember that we had uh, marginal tax rates above 90 percent. Yes, that well, a at a time when the economy was actually doing. I grew up in that America. time, yeah. and 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 that's when all the libraries. Yeah, I'm not were, advocating for it. I'm just saying no, it's the not libraries the were open. There weren't potholes. Schools were great. Yeah. Uh, Fox so, likes talking about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Yeah. I, I think they talk about her more than than anybody else does. Uh, they the, the the right is enjoying having her as the image of what Democrats are. Is there a danger if uh, someone that progressive runs that it, it 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 does turn off moderates, or do you think that's not a danger worth wor worrying about? I'm not. No. First of all, if you're moderate, stop being moderate. Take a position. All right. There's no middle ground anymore. There's no halfway point to should somebody be paid a living wage. Well, I'm a moderate, so I think they could be paid half of a living wage. You know, if, if, on the issue of choice, uh, there's no halfway there. You're, you're either for it or you're against it. Uh, you know, do you believe in equal rights for women? Do you believe that we should have an equal rights amendment? Yes or no? There's no middle ground. This right. is no time right. for so moderation. Where there is middle ground possibly is health care and taxes. Right. Why, how where? much you tax the rich? Oh, how much? The, Seventy uh, percent of the or, people or, said tax the rich. Or or seventy percent. Oh, the, the or what kind of health care? Right. There are many what different kind? ways of in, of insuring everybody. Really? We, we both agree. Well, you mean you know I like my system from Canada. It's one of several systems that most of the developed world use. I guess yes. my point is that all of the developed all of the world. The developed don't world say world most. For, well, there's don't a lot of people. Don't be moderate and pull your punch here. Right. All of the developed world, has, except for America, except for this country. And, it, and it's shameful, and it, we right. look weird, yeah. too. You can't explain it to a person no. from another country. No, it's not a progressive policy anywhere else in the world. It's just the policy, right? It's just the policy. Conservatives it. in Canada yes. would never think of removing right. their Canadian health care. The Tories in Britain, all behind it. Right. The, this, is, this is the craziest thing. So you feel strongly that, that it's, it's, a, it's a progressive, and it's specifically Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yes, I don't think Americans right now 
actually really identify themselves in the old school way of I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, you know. I don't think that's what's going on. I think that people have had it. I think that they have realized that they're sick and tired of living from paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. and this has to end. And they know that their kids are never going to pay off those And if loans. we didn't see it, we saw it in the shutdown, where you saw government employees, the ones that a whole bunch of Republicans spent years telling me are overpaid who couldn't make it to their yeah, second another lie when they weren't. Lie after lie. There's lines in Canada outside the doctor's offices. All, lie after lie after lie. Has Ralph Northam called us yet? Anybody? He hasn't. It, we have a minute left in the show. We have show, a minute, so. Ralph. We've got one minute I'm not, left. I'm not holding out a whole lot no, of hope. I'm um, disappointed. Uh, Michael, thank you as always for being here. Uh, I appreciate it. We will uh, we will remember this conversation when thank 2020 you, comes around. And Super Bowl Sunday, let me just say. You going to make a prediction? I'm going to say quit all the whining saints. I don't want to hear this anymore. You know, the, in that same game mm -hmm. of that pass interference, uh, there were two face masks that the saints did to the Rams that the refs didn't catch. Plus a roughing up of a player and a and the clock had run down and they Brady didn't snap the ball. You could look at four different things that could have changed that game where the refs missed it on the Saints. The Saints 2012, remember, cash for it. They gave bonuses to their players if they broke the bones on the other side. And that coach We're out was of time. suspended for a year. That That's is the all last I'm word say. for tonight. I'm Ali Velshi. He's Michael Moore. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.